<laughs> and um, then we did something called safe healing touch. Uh, this was pioneered by Richard Cohen, uh, this guy from uh, The Daily Show. <laughs> he, he started it out. Uh, we were given instructions on how to correctly engage in healing touch, which I'll share with you guys here. Um, it's important that you do the healing touch in groups of three or more. Um, you should do it in a non-sexual setting, preferably in your men's support group. Um, I would like the two of you, please, uh, if you'll just kind of turn that way. All right, uh, what's your name? Luke. Luke, and you are? Cedric. Cedric. All right, Luke and Cedric. All right. Uh, Luke, you are going to help Cedric overcome his emotional wounds. Um, one of the reasons that Cedric suffers from same-sex attraction is because he didn't get the loving, healing touch from his father that he needed as a child. So Luke is going to help recreate that loving touch that Cedric didn't get. So Luke, I want you to sit down on the floor with your feet pointed at that. <laughs> and Cedric... <laughs> Oh, no, you're fine where you are. And uh, Cedric, I'd like you to, actually, I'd like you to sit on that side. No, no, sit, no, it's You're fine. Don't move. Now, Cedric, I'd like you to sit next to uh, Luke with your feet also pointed out that way. And um, Luke, if you would just go ahead and reach your arm around uh, Cedric and just kind of pull him in. <laughs> and as I mentioned earlier, one of the rules of safe healing touch is that you do it in groups of, of three or more. So gentlemen, if you will please go ahead and circle around these guys. And I would like you to impart your masculine healing energy to Cedric. So place your hands on his legs, on his chest, or on his arms. <laughs> I feel so much more bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, this, this hold is called uh, the side-by-side, -side, simple enough. Um, so this was the first hold. The second hold, uh, Luke, I would like you to please scissor your legs open. <laughs> and then, uh, Cedric, if you will go ahead and sit between his legs. <laughs> and turn towards me after you move that way. Just, just you, Cedric, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just just you. Yeah, so go ahead and turn towards me. Oh, yeah, you turn towards me. Yeah. <laughs> and just kind of lean back into Luke's chest. <laughs> <laughs> so, gentlemen, if you will please impart your masculine <laughs> healing energy. <laughs> uh, this is hold number two. It's also called the Cohen hold. <laughs> and uh, the third hold, well, um, Cedric, I would like you to just turn your feet facing that way. And just to lean all the way back. <laughs> Gentlemen, masculine healing energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. This one is called the motorcycle. <laughs> Can you get the lights, please? See, uh, while we were doing this, uh, we were in groups. There were about 50 of us in this uh, this lodge in Arizona, and we were doing this this healing touch with one man at a time. And uh, the lights were down, and then we uh, listened to a song. <laughs> Are you guys, do you guys like to sing tonight? <laughs> yeah? Do it. All right. All right. <laughs>
Now, giving this presentation, um, sometimes when questions are raised about healing touch therapy, what exactly is it that we're laughing about today? Are we laughing at the ridiculous nature of these programs? Or are we also a little uncomfortable when it comes to men showing affection to each other? We are, I assume, a pretty liberal secular crop here tonight. May we also be a little bit homophobic as well? Something. Would it be as funny if it was women up here doing the same polls? Would it be the same experience? <coughs> or do we laugh because it's men touching each other? Something to think about. Um, this stuff ain't free. The weekend I attended was $650. But as you can see, there are all sorts of packages and resources available to you for a nominal fee. Um, even for parents who are trying to get help with their kids, they can be charged just $400 to learn how to talk to their own children. Big question is, do they work? What's going on here? Is change really possible? Well, um, a few months ago, I published a story about my weekend experience at the camp, and one of the guys who attended with me uh, replied that, you know, that he had since come out since attending the weekend, and it had not worked for him. The American Psychological Association last year com uh, completed a long study where they looked at dozens of, uh, of studies over the past 20 years, and they concluded that there is insu there's insufficient evidence that these programs work. Um, but of course, you know, I'm a liberal atheist, and these are a bunch of scientists and doctors that use that scientific method and not the Bible, so you know, they're biased. <laughs> so let's talk to the people who are actually into these programs. Mr. Joe Dallas, the former president of Exodus International, says that he knows of no magic cure in the introduction to his own book. Uh, there is Mr. Busty and Gary Cooper, who got married um, after they founded Exodus International themselves. Uh, John Hulk in 1998 was featured on the cover of Newsweek. Um, for supposedly uh, being cured. Two years later, he was photographed leaving a gay bar in Washington, D.C. Uh, Dr. Shock, Dr. Levin, uh, who in South Africa was using electroshock therapy to cure his gay patients, was uh, videotaped coming on to his own male patients. Uh, Love and Action's John Smith, uh, one of their former leaders, apologized for his involvement in the movement, saying, did I really used to be gay? Then there's Dr. George Rieger. Uh, if you guys saw the Colbert Report a couple weeks ago, this is just... <laughs> Mr. Rieger um, is a member of NARC. He's one of the board members for the National Association for the Comparative Therapy of Homosexuals. He's also a member of the board of the Family Research Council. He's one of the founding members. Um, this figure is wrong. It's actually about $100,000. He was paid by the state of Florida to testify against gay adoption. Well. Um, just a couple weeks ago, Mr. Reekers was photographed at the Miami airport with this young man here whose face is blurred out. Turns out if you go to a website called rentboy.com, <laughs> you will find the profile of this young man. Um, the two of them had just come back from a lovely vacation together in Europe. Um, so yeah, he had been caught with, it, with uh, basically a male prostitute. Uh, Dr. Reeker says, well, he just had surgery and that he needed help lifting his bags. Uh, the young man said that Mr. Reeker's liked a move called the long stroke across his penis thigh and over his anus and butt cheeks. Um, I guess that was part of his vacation. As uh, Mr. Colbert put it, apparently Dr. Reeker's needed help lifting his sack. <laughs> Why did I come up with that? 